came to the House on November 17th to present the budget statement and economic policy of government. And there were some um, developments, backwards and forwards. But as the hands that provides, the budget statement came to be approved by the House. Now, that budget statement and economic policy contained the E-Levy proposals. Parliament approved of the budget statement and economic policy. What it means is that Parliament approved of it, the E-Levy, in essence, when approved of the budget statement and economic policy. Now, subsequent to that, the, as I've told you, the anticipation is that the revenue stream will feed into the consolidated fund. Now, from the consolidated fund, the anticipated revenue, we have made allocations to the various ministries, departments, agencies, and sectors of the economy, including the constitutional and statutory creatures. Now, the estimates, the revenues allocated to these um, sectors and constitutional and statutory creatures includes the anticipations from the E-Levy. Reference were made to the various committees who went and considered these allocations, the estimates of revenues and expenditures, they submitted their reports, and when the reports came to Parliament, the entire House approved of these estimates made to the various sectors, the MDAs, the constitutional and statutory uh, bodies. We approved of them by consensus and some by um, unanimity. After we had done all these things, as a second step, we came to the third step. The third step was the amalgamation, the consolidation of all these estimates into what we call the appropriations bill. The appropriations bill was referred to the finance committee, the finance committee composed of members from both sides of the house. And when they went to consider the appropriations bill, fed by revenues, including the e-levy tax revenues, the finance committee came to report to the house that there was no disagreement and that the house should approve of their report unanimously. Remember that day when the chairman of the finance committee, the Honorable Kogu submitted the report of the finance committee and seconding the report, the ranking member then suggested that because there was no disagreement whatsoever, nobody should be given the opportunity to speak to their report. We should adopt the report of the finance committee on the appropriations bill unanimously. And that indeed is what Parliament did. Now, because the e-levy is a new tax that is being introduced, it must be foundationed on the appropriate legal regime, which is the e-levy bill that we dealt with today. Now, fancy the situation having undertaken these three exercises. One, approving the budget. Two, approving of the various estimates. And three, the passage of the appropriations bill. Could anybody turn around to say that we disapprove of the, the, the law to support the e-levy that we have already approved of in these three enterprises, these three transactions that already were done? What would have been the input? The implication would have been, one, either parliament didn't understand what they were doing, which is why we had passed those three stages, or perhaps we had no idea the import of that exercise of passing the e-levy bill. I'm happy that today, having listened to them, and you, you were there in the chamber, I'm not too sure that the insistence was that the e-levy is a nuisance, let's jettison it. Uh, if, you, if you listen to the minority leader, for instance, and I want to quote him, 
um, the he said e levy the ranking member he said the e levy alone cannot cure all our problems when he was talking about the akubam uh, issue he said the e levy alone cannot cure all our problems what does this mean by necessary implication it means that the e levy can cure some problems which means that he admits that is good somehow and then the minority leader then added that we should come with a more comprehensive uh, policy. So it means that it means that we admit that it is good, but perhaps it's not an excellent piece of legislation. So you move from the known to the unknown. Is that not the case? So the city colleagues, um, I think we've done what is good for the country. But as a, as a house, we should also position ourselves to monitor the proceedings. It's been uh, quite a while. The effect of this uh, lethargy on the economy has not been good. Uh, over the past three months, uh, there was considerable uncertainty about our revenues. And uh, Ghanaians investors and even the GRE was worried. Which explains why there was a lot of speculation in the system, which speculation led to the downgrading of um, um, us and also the downward spiral of the city, which raised the cost of living. So the passage of this bill Really, you heard the minority that when he related to the cumulative effect of what is happening, that people should know that we are going to add to the back of an existing regime, which is 2%, plus 1.75, he said. Maybe he didn't know that he, uh, the bill was, the rate was going to climb down to 1.5. But he says it was going to go to uh, 3.75. Now, be that as it may, what it means is that already you have 2% in the system. Which 2% is not coming to government? It's feeding the economies of those of them, those companies that are collecting these, these monies from Ghanaians. The telcos. And they are not building our roads for us. They are not building our hospitals. They are not building our schools. They just collect the monies. Enterprises that were not set, set up to conduct the business of banks. They are now into banking, collecting monies, and then taking them to their, their home countries to grow their economies. Government, or the Ghanaian state, now, to, now want to own a stake in this, have some money to develop our economy. Would any person who is patriotic say to us that, no, don't do it, allow them to take the money to develop their economies, I don't want you to introduce any law that will compel Ghanaians to pay to develop our countries. Would any patriotic person say that? Distinguished colleagues, I think we have seen enough, we have heard enough. I don't want to rehash what you all witnessed, but we should all be thankful to God Almighty, be thankful to um, colleagues, the MPP, members of parliament, and I would say to the extent that, to the extent that our colleagues were not raucous, they were in attendance and no such infractions came, I think we should also be thankful to them that we had a smooth conduct of business in the house and we are moving the agenda of national development forward. I thank you once again for attending to this.